gonna get you though <laughs> about this at least we won't be able to play it anymore but until then Hola community, welcome to Blender Today, episode 201. We are in that real, that weird time in space in Blender developments that we have a stable release 3.2.2. We have, wait, 3.2.1. Actually, we haven't released 3.2.2. Hmm. 3.2. Point, uh, no, 3.3 is now beta which means 3.4 is in alpha but there is also 293 lts which is active so we have two active releases one in beta and then one in alpha so four releases to follow oh so let's see what's new in the a, a bit of the beta one but also mainly alpha remember just uh, remember that most of the things that I'm going to say uh, now, that I'm going to share now, if they're too big, they are going to 3.4. They're not going to 3.3 because being beta, 3.3, it's only meant to uh, to have back fixes, to have... it's um, The idea is to make it as stable as possible. So that's where you come in. So, okay, first, let's see how pretty the new splash in. This splash by... Piotr Krinsky, it's beautiful. It gives some, I don't know, video games, some Game of Thrones vibe, some, uh, it's it's just amazing. And uh, if you actually go into Piotr's uh, profile, you go to his art station, it's just mind blowing what he's doing there. It's, um, it's mainly like concept art, but I couldn't really pick one that I like we, we had to go with one but I would I think I'm uh, when I make the the um, the release notes I'm gonna add much more artwork by him because it's just just a great demo of what blender can do he has like um like really high poly stuff like the scene from the splash is like 20 million polygons or so like if you if you think there's one of the videos where you can see the the actual resolution. Yeah, I don't think you get to see it down there, but it says like 20 million polygons. I mean, Cycles is just rendering like nothing. It's just, just amazing. So with, with even volumetrics and stuff. So super, super nice. No, there is a cracking in the sound. Okay. I think I fixed it. I might need to replace that cable. So I just by touching the cable, I think. Odds cable plug in. Plug in. It's not an, it's an XLR cable. Um, I hope now it's off. Cool. Next. What else? Um, that, yeah, well, back reports. Yeah, we are in that moment, in that moment in a release that we need you to report bugs, to make Blender great as always not again it's always because the bug reports here if you can follow these graphics they just stay stable and there are a bit more of untriage reports because at the beginning of the week or usually over the weekend there is a peak but this should be blowing up this should be like people should go like oh it's better now i can report bugs so please go because the more you report the more stable uh, blender becomes Okay, now that we got Ad out of the way, let's talk a bit about what's new in this week. So what is new in this week? We can talk about a bit of curves, UV uh, geometry nodes, compositor. Well, compositor, not yet, but just a heads up. And uh, UI uh, translation stuff, add-ons and uh, um, OBJ importer. So let's get started with the star of the show in... Um, 3.3 which is going to be curves for hair so curves um well what an easy one is that uh the default tool when you would start it wouldn't um blender wouldn't have any tool activated so now if you add a curve empty hair in and when you move into sculpt mode it's gonna mm, sculpt mode is on the right 
Wait, in objects is on the bottom. All right, that needs to be fixed. The position should always be preserved in every mode. Uh, that's an issue, but it should be fixed, easily fixed. Uh, okay, so sculpt mode um, by default is gonna choose the density brush, which is the one that is probably going to be the most used in this case because it's more, it's even better than adding or removing because it does both. It's better than just adding, better than deleting, because it just just does both depending on the density that you have, and um, it's it's going to do whatever you expect it to do. But also, I don't know if you noticed, but the way this the order these tools are sorted now it makes a bit more sense. The everything that has to do with adding and deleting it's on the top. There is selection at the very top, like uh, in other modes in Blender. Then there is like adding and removing, and then there is transform tools. There is a sculpt, the snake hook, grow shrink, pink, pinch, and puff, which are kind of close and well opposite, but they are, you know what I mean. Smooth and uh, slide. Slide is like its own, its own little monster, but um, it it fits there. Next, let's uh, UV. Actually, there is a new. Um, uh, there are new options in UV editing when in island mode when you are when you can select multiple islands you can do the select similar shortcut which is shift shift G I think select grouped select similar um, it lets you select by uh, area UV area 3D wow that's cool and uh, face so you can um, you can select uh, other islands that have a similar number of faces, which is pretty handy. <clears throat> um, for people that are asking questions in the chat, I am I am following you here, but remember that we have a thread on blender.community or blender.today where you can leave your questions and there are already six comments here, so uh, make sure you leave them there so we, we put them all together and people can vote also for their own questions or for other people's questions so we get to answer them uh, first in priority. Okay, the other options, the other news actually have to do with geometry nodes. There are a few nodes, new nodes in the neighborhood. They are the shortest path nodes. So they let you, um, there are field nodes that let you like uh, select stuff, for example. You can short, you can select the shortest edge paths and uh, for example with uh, inputs like the end vertex and the edge host. What is that? Um, and outputs like the next vertex index and the cost to end. Alright, I'm gonna need to add some, is there a manual already entry for those? Are those I don't think they're already added to the manual so if I do like um, if I do select no short edge path right click manual am I being too optimistic here I don't think it's opening anything even all right so f1 nope huh all right so maybe that menu doesn't have them so if I do where is the the shortest path is in mesh. So if I do mesh and then shortest path. No, I don't think the manual is even working at all for this yet, but it should. It will in the final release. Edge paths to curve. Let's do convert um, paths to curves. It has a mesh as an input and then you can output curves. And then you have the um, edge paths to selection. Is in that. Nice. Start vertices, next vertex index, and then the selection. There is a blend file here as a demo, and there is a, there should be another one like an image that looks pretty cool. Um, where is it? Uh, this one. Look at that. Look at that amaze thing. Interesting. How how are, like look at like the engagement of this. So I think I need to catch up with what this can do. Um, 
the all the links for everything that I'm looking at it's on the uh, description so if you can if you want to skip watching this you can just go straight down to the patch each one of the patches there have even sections and you can see about this feature and the next one that I'm showing it's a uh, simple it's just renaming but it's a PSA if you can't find the field on domain um, node is because now it's called interpolate domain which includes a verb in the name which is a convention with other names with other nodes so it's a bit more clear to what it does more than field on domain it always felt a bit weird and the, the next uh, change is very small it's in the node editor now you can um, press escape to exit the resizing of a node so if you're in the middle of resizing a node you can press escape to cancel the same way you can do right click i believe yes so that was missing for consistency okay what else speaking of the compositor no of the node editor um the real-time compositor is not here yet but the everything else seems to be prepared well let, let me confirm that it's not here yet because i think i read every commit but maybe i'm missing it if i go to render okay it's not here so the compositor should maybe okay it's not here good good i didn't miss anything but there are little signs that things are happening somehow somewhere because for example this commit adds the all the needed gpu module changes for the real-time compositor to exist so it's all under the hood it's nothing for the final user but it you know sets the the foundations for what's to come hopefully this week i understood it was going to be uh, the week one week ago but um last week was a bit crazy because of the changing from alpha to beta for the new master all the bug fixes had to be done so it's good to see that uh, it's it's progressing at least the next uh, change let's talk a bit about the, um, the, the the user interface okay so hello 1.5 billion people that will benefit from this change that's a lot of people blf blender font new font stack for better language coverage so apparently the the font that blender was using was missing was even though it would cover a lot of characters and languages it was still missing um many important ones especially those that are well not uh, uh latin with the latin letters so the one downside is that okay there is a the, there is a bit more like it blender is going to be a bit heavier because there is more fonts but now they should cover around 44 top languages by number of speakers so that's that that's a lot so all the way from english mandarin hindi to bengali to korean to canada thai all the way to burmese and many things that i cannot even pronounce okay um that's super cool so good to see the it, it's such a those changes that are like blender wide just blender ui wide are it's great to see so thank you harley for working on that the next change it's also something that it will make blender more accessible to more people because it has to do with translations i mentioned this in the past uh, few episodes as well but now damien keeps working on it so this one for example this commit makes the presets translatable presets were not translatable for um uh, yeah presets are everywhere in blender uh, you wouldn't even uh, be able to tell what is a preset where it's not sometimes because they are embedded in blender ui but many of them were not uh, unstrained and they were untranslatable you couldn't translate them <laughs> that's it the next uh, change also makes crisp uh, pencil and shader effects translatable and lastly the added constraints names are also they, they can be translated so yay for accessibility <clears throat> 
Another user interface change that is not related to a translation, but to animation editors, it's so that the based on community feedback, the sidebar panel, the, the end sidebar, not panel, sidebar region, it's now going to be open uh, by default in animation editors. So that is a, so for the graph driver and dope sheet are now open by default based on feedback from the community. Let me know. What do you think about this change? The, oh, right. Let's talk about, well, a bit of Eevee and compositing. So Eevee now supports rendering curves with CryptoMat. There were two errors apparently going on. One, the hair code was used to draw the curves. So that's no longer the case. And the vertex shader wasn't aware of curves and failed to compile altogether, so you wouldn't see anything. So that is now has been solved. So yay, Eevee Cryptomat. Next, okay. Today, I think the theme for today is just fixes. There are fixes all over the place in this week. There are some of them that make the sequencer faster, for example, to um, encode, to encode, there was one big change um, had to do with web nine. Where was that? Mm. Yeah, BP nine encoding takes about five times as much time as transcoding with FFmpeg. This was a bug. It was a bug that was reported and now has been fixed thanks to the uh, to enabling SS3 for AVX AVX two instruction sets. So thanks for your computer to understand that, hey, I can handle all this stuff. So let's use it uh, for, for FFmpeg to handle that, uh, to be optimized for that. The same um, has been applied and uh, fixed for Windows that fixes another issue with VFPP9, the same codec, and another one that adds video rendering FFmpeg AV1 codec encoding support. So there is a new re dependency required. Interesting. Okay, the next changes that has to do is a fix, mainly a PSA, to let you know that if you had issues when using light groups and shadow catcher, that has been fixed. So light group passes do not work when shadow catcher is used. That report was done some time ago, and Sunday evening was fixed by Lucas Stockner. Lucas, don't work on the weekends. Next, um, another change in that has to do with animating animating visibility of objects so it wasn't rendering properly in the viewport that was a mistake in a recent commit so now that has been uh, if you were driving the visibility you wouldn't work so now it should work next these changes have to do with io mainly with the obj importer and no, importer, it's only about the importer. These changes, these fixes by Adas are all over the place. For example, the old Python importer uh, would handle special cases like when they're floating vertices, like a vertex that is not connected to another vertex by a, a edge or that make a face, for example. So if you have like point clouds, that would uh, be handled by the Python importer, but not by the new importer that also this makes it into 3.3 lts by the way so this will be part of 3.3 most of the changes i mentioned today are for 3.4 but some 3.3 such as this other change that fixes some cases when it will import faces so you can read all the details in the links below but uh, this is a major rewrite of some areas of the importer that had to do with the assumption that some data was grouped by object and that has been fixed. Another improvement or fix in that area by Aras2 is the um, images loaded multiple times instead of being reused. So you will end up with tons of images if you had, uh, if the image was shared among other objects, you would import them every time again instead of reusing the same and leading to huge files that's no longer the case so yay for that and speaking of images or linking files the relative 
pads, image pads, was were working <laughs> in the OBJ import. So such a such a huge um, yeah issue. <laughs> I mean, I think relative pads are a must when working in production. And um, speaking of fixes and related to add-ons, actually, let's let's see a bit of flow that was given this week to the node wrangler add-on there were many bug reports and many have been tackled this one by leon it fixes or improves the alignment on of nodes in the texture setup so the i guess it's the control t so in master this would happen that sometimes you would when you press control t that adds um not control T, but when you set up a shader that connects the inputs and makes like an image texture um, node connected to a mapping, connected to a texture coordinate, it would sometimes appear on top of other objects or even misaligned. And that can be very frustrating. Not anymore. This is how it works now. So if you... That's so cool. It positions where it, sh where it belongs and even makes it... That's super cool. So nice. AI. No, I'm kidding. And also, it handles better the uh, disabled sockets. So there are sockets that are not connected to or are disabled because they uh, they don't make any sense or you have disabled or hi hi hit them. Uh, this would happen. So if there is no input socket, why would you even try to <laughs> do anything with it? Now this has been fixed. So the holdout node that doesn't have any input doesn't trigger the texture node setup. Thank you, Liam, for working on that. And there's been a other uh, people from the community like Oliver Weisbarth has changed uh, something that was already changed in other places in Blender, even in the Blender manual. And internally the code the, for the swap links was called swap outputs which didn't make sense because it will also work for inputs so uh yeah that now has been renamed just in case you don't find it anymore keep and uh, remember that it has been changed also uh enable sockets for lazy mix the fix again by leon makes it so when you connect the when you use the lazy mix that you drag you do a gesture and connect to uh you drag between two nodes and it will make a mix node. Well, sometimes it could happen that it would always default to the first output that is um, that was just available. And now it would actually look for one that is enabled rather than just using the first output ever. So that is good to see it to make it more, more robust. Another change is that by Vincent, thanks Vincent Blankfield, the, um, this is a, a visual change that the broken uh, node outline when fast connecting, sometimes the outline would be weird. I just wanted to give a shout out to Vincent for fixing this and to everybody that contributes to improve existing add-ons instead of going and going the easy way to just make a new add-on for a feature that could easily fit in the existing add-ons in Blender. I know it takes longer time, you have to agree with other people, your code has to be maybe a bit more tidy because you want to, um, yeah, because it has to follow some um, conventions in Blender, but in the end it's better for everybody and it contributes to the spirit of open source that we all work on improving what is already there instead of just coming up with a new one. The next um, which is always good for innovation, but sometimes makes sense to improve it, such as Scott Ramsey fixed a long-standing issue with the um, an, a utility that has the Node Wrangler uh, menu, for example, the Node Wrangler add-on. There is a the Shift S for uh, swapping a node, so if you have the emission shader and you want to change it for a diffuse, Shift S and you can change it. You can select it from there. However, that list was manually made. So every time there was a new node in Blender, new shader, new whatever, you have to go and manually add it. And as you can imagine, this can easily get 
and out of sync. So this has been fixed. Now it's all automatic and it's properly implemented by Scott with improvements by uh, on a patch by Benny Mars. So team work. Thanks people for working on this. Also, thanks to Nathan Lovato from GD Quest. Not only super busy with, uh, with the training, making training for Godot, but also he made Power Sequencer, that add-on that is now part of Blender, for already for many versions, but it was a bit out of date. He uh, went ahead and improved it, fixed it, brought it up to 3.3 level and fixed a whole bunch of stuff in there. Um, maybe, I think it's mainly just fixing an API stuff, but also I guess there is a, there, now there, like the sequencer has changed a lot since the last time power sequencer was, was worked on. So I wonder if that has to do with it as well. Um, another improvement is that the, in the camera rigs, so functionality wise for the user, not much has changed except that the camera rigs are not going to have a empty as target. Uh, like for the depth of field. Not anymore because since last week, if you remember, there is now a, when you, when you select an armature as uh, depth of field target, there is a new field underneath that lets you select a bone. So you don't need to have an empty. So yay for less other object types and just bones, just a new bone. Thank you, Damien, for working on that. And that's about it. There are many, many changes. If you if you use any of the add-ons, Archimesh, Measure It, uh, MathVis, the VR scene inspection, Scatter Objects, and many others, if you notice any updates there, it's mainly because they have been upgraded to use the new GPU module for whatever drawing they do on the on the screen on Blender. And if you are if you have add-ons that use the old BGL module and you're looking for a reference to update your own add-ons to use the new GPU module, you should have a look at the latest commits in Archimesh, Measure It, MathVis, VR, Scene Inspection, and all the ones I mentioned. All right, I think I managed to cover everything in the new stuff in Blender. I'm going to jump into, well not jump, slowly walk. Today I have a slow day, <laughs> sorry. So let's go into bam. Control space on Blender community will center the like in Blender. It will it will expand the um, the post. Okay, let's see how many questions do we have. Fourteen. Let's see if we can. Ah, well, yeah, of course, we still have twenty minutes. Um, definitely gonna make it. Blend Creator asks, where can I test EV next and when will it become part of an official Blender version? When it's ready and where can I test it? You can test it if you compile Blender and or if you use the build bot, I think, under developer extras, experimental EV next, but you are going to be disappointed if you're expecting something like radically new because, wait, it should, doesn't show up. Developer extras, experimental, EV next. Wow, doesn't even show up. It should, it used to show up here now, but I guess to keep the expect expectations, uh, you know, low, they have removed it. So yeah, no, you can test it in some builds, but um, I guess you need to enable it somewhere else. Yep, the the main thing about EV next is under the hood is not just, it's like Cycles X, right? Um, Cycles X, be, because the rendering is a bit, it was a lot slower, it's easy to compare. But uh, yeah, there's still a, a long way to come for EV Next. I know we all want it, but yes. Zu Rogen says, hey Pablo, two questions related to geometry. And uh, hello, Blend Creator. Hello. Um, Related to geometry nodes. One, when are physics solvers coming to geometry nodes? Two, are there are there currently plans to implement loops in geometry nodes similar to in Houdini? Um, there is 
already a, the roadmap at the moment is focused on getting curves. First, you need to have curves. However, to replace hair in Blender. However, hair has in Blender, like the, the regular particle hair, have some sort of physics or dynamics, hair dynamics. So in order for the new hair system to be fully, to re fully replace the previous system, there are plans to um, add solvers, physics, but also simulations. And that is what the team is gonna focus on next. But for the near future, it won't happen because there are yeah, the, the, her, the curves project has to be finished yet. And also there is, uh, there is not a lot of developers that can handle this. And the, some of the developers are busy in, for example, uh, integrating. There's now one project about integrating node groups as part of assets in Blender. So it's a bit hard to explain, but basically, um, Blender, like everything that you see here, it's one node, everything. Like in Shift A, everything is one node. But that's going to change because the idea is that Blender can come with built-in assets or like basically node groups that can show up in Blender just like they were regular uh, nodes. And that would be insane because because it, yeah, that makes basically allows it uh, allows the developers to come up with new modifiers, for example, new node groups, new materials, or to ship Blender with more useful node groups instead of just letting you having to build everything from scratch. And that I am more excited about that than pretty much anything else. I could live without physics for now but please give us the chance to have assets as part of blender as part of the menus in blender for example ship a and a, a new object and um let me go into the mode clock object modes there um yeah for example here imagine if you could have like uv sphere not it wasn't just like this one operator but it was actually a node group that would be amazing <clears throat> and next hey paulo please i'm begging you oh and and the loops also the same priorities in other areas at the moment Ivek, hey paulo please please i'm begging you <laughs> begging you more than before that when you have time to communicate with the blender developers they should create a script node in blender geometry nodes that and convert the render region to a camera. Render region to a camera. So, for example, but that that should be shouldn't be too hard to to make. So, like this, this into a camera. That would actually be pretty cool, and you could do it. Would be doing be an operator from here, like. Anybody that knows a little bit of scripting can make an, uh, an add-on for this. But yeah, it would be nice as a, as a actual tool. I agree with you. Um, okay, I don't like when the object goes. There you go. So, interesting. Yeah, that would be actually pretty neat. Okay, next. Um, next question is Barf Garbage. Ayo, I'm conducting a vibe check on the inconsistencies in add, shift, and add menus in the different node editors. In geometry nodes, the menu is mostly alphabetical, unlike shader and compositor nodes. Also, nodes like math is under utilities, a menu in geometry nodes, and under converter in the other two editors. How do you plea? I plea that a consistency is key that we should try to be as consistent as possible and bring come up with a proposal which which should win geometry nodes shader nodes what do you think i i think in some cases like the converter well they are 
they convert everything com converts right in shading so math it i think is better in utilities than conversion um yeah i think it makes more sense in uh, shading nodes but um mostly alphabetical geometry nodes i think it is alphabetical except for the last um for the group and layout because group and layout there should be a separator isn't there no there's not there should be a separator because it's mainly alphabetical it should be alphabetical except the last two because they have to do with like organization they are not actual nodes they have to do with yeah organization or like the the group well you you could argue um but layout is purely um organization so that was the reasoning behind it but maybe this time that we need to switch a complete um alphabetical order but yeah come up with a proposal make a right click select post Amesa says hey pablo do you think animation nodes will be added to blender in c in the new in the near future uh no no i think uh, animation nodes is already in use using python Cyton, right python c so it's already performant enough and animation nodes is really its own thing that it actually was developed by one of the developers of geometry nodes so by jack look so it no i think blender will have its own version in the future but that is a long way to go i don't think um, i think animation nodes as, a, as an add-on allows it gives you way more freedom to and to experiment and play around but um many ideas should be taken from there and added into blender the blender way um next question hi paulo how are you says Ilya C. Do you know if EVNX will tolerate every cycle nodes? I'm thinking about the amino occlusion node as an example. Also, do you, know, do you know if a dirt node is being worked on? I don't know about a dirt node and about tolerate every cycles nodes. That is, it should be closer to cycles, but it's not the purpose. Still, Blender, oh, well, EV, it's, it's still focused on being a, a flexible real time or as close at real time as possible that maybe you can hack around a bit more than uh, than cycles that is purely a bad tracer hello i know this is more of a question for amd but do you know if cycles hedge hip support for all their amd cards is being worked on i they promised it in the past they said that first the latest ones and then they will work their way back so it is a question more for amd but that's all i read at least when they uh, they when they talked about it when they posted it brady says hello pablo greetings from australia yay fellow down under the southern hemisphere is there any news for approval or rejections regarding the blender conference the conference website said info would be out by august 1st was it really August 1st? Did we commit to that? Knowing that the time... Wait, call for participation. August 1st, latest. Well, I... I can have a look in the... Huh. All right. No, let me get back to you, but... Don't worry, there is still, there should be still time. Um, so I would, if you haven't heard about the team, uh, please patience, but um, the team will get back to you. Thing is, next week, actually there won't be a Blender live, Blender Today live stream because we are going to be in Vancouver in Canada for SeaGraph. We are going, most of the team is going there. Stone is going, Francesco, Dalai, Seabrand, like, uh, uh, people from the Blender Studio as well, so yeah, things are gonna be maybe a bit less productive, but um, the people that are actually going through the presentations is Ton and Francesco, so yeah. I would say if you have anything to submit, go ahead and submit it, even if it's a placeholder and you need like an extra day or two or whatever to to finish it. Um, just 
just just uh, just just post it and they will be I mean it's not like no if you some don't submit it by August 1st at midnight no no things are flexible um, especially if you have a pretty cool thing to show and if you're coming all the way from Australia you get preference well I don't know if you get preference but you know people are more flexible you're coming a long way Chad Bolt Hello Pablo, quick question today. Are there plans to have an asset browser support fully rigged characters? You can bring them into the scene as a collection, but then the bones cannot be posed. Yes, actually that is part of the plans. And you're sure that it cannot be posed today as in like now? If not, then uh, it should come uh, at some point because the, this was one of the uh, pain points that was brought up during the um, workshop uh, on that was held here what workshop was a series of meetings here at the studio about the library override system in general so what you uh, is not an asset browser thing is more of a library override but uh yeah there is the the people the, the team is aware of this Okay, so hi, uh, hi, Paolo. I hope you're having a great day. Let me re refresh the. Maybe I'm gonna. Okay, how many more? Let's go to the first one at the bottom. How much time? Okay, we have time. Nitro asks Are there currently. Hello, Nitro. Any plans to overhaul Blender's UV system, or is the current development focused mainly on geometry nodes, texturing, among others, outlined in the 3.x roadmap and strategic? Targets. There seems to be someone with a vested interest in it at this point. I had an update recently, if I recall. You are right, nub nub nub, nub nub bud. But it's actually better than that because there is someone that is hired full time, I believe, um, to work on the Blender UV editor. So, fund.blender.org. This is where you go and see what's happening like alpha wall renew or serial griset renew or you can actually see other people that have renew pato calvelo and let's see we, do we find any people from the community piotr yeah and um this is some, some cool names here sometimes pop up all right so all these beautiful people are contributing to the blender development fund which allows the blender foundation to hire people or not hire full time if they don't want to, but at least get a grant, get a, okay, three months, one month, six months, whatever, to make parts of Blender awesome. One of them, one of these awesome people is Chris Blackburn, who is working purely and solely on UV uh, tools and stuff. So I wouldn't say there is a huge, a like an overhaul plant, because first, there's so many uh, adjustments and tweaks and, and like low hanging fruit changes that will make the UV editor so much better, but with little work in compared to like a rehaul, a rewrite of the entire system. So, yes, I know Chris is uh, fully committed to work on this. And also, um, Daniel Bystead, the amazing artist that has been giving us great eevee creepy art as well and he will uh, he's part of the of the team and he has a long to-do list for the uv editor that he's is if you know him you probably know him um well if you haven't but uh yeah he is awesome and he is involved in the team he has a long list of things to um to to improve in the blender uv editor and that means that the UV editor is in good hands of artists that are experienced and developers that actually want to work on that area. Next, reanimate. Hello, Pablo. Any chance we can get multiple file importing for Blender? Importing multiple objects, FBX, etc., drag and drop from file browser into the shader, edit editor multiple image from the file browsers okay so that's a bunch of different areas in blender kind of related to each other but the um, 
For example, can we get multiple file importing for Blender? What happens if you bring, if you drag three Blend files into Blender? What does it happen? Does it open multiple Blend Blender Blender in instances, or it tries to open one, or it appends them into one file, or what happens? Question number one. This question is for you. Whenever you ask for a feature request, get ready to answer these kind of questions. Like, not not trying to sound uh, smart here. Sorry, I, I'm just that it's always good to to imagine what could happen. Some of these questions are actually easy to answer. Like when you drag and drop multiple images from the file browser into the shader editor, that should just basically make a bunch of image nodes. However, in when you drag it into the world shade world uh, editor, it always adds an image texture, but sometimes you want an environment texture if you're in that editor. So, but what happens if you select multiple? If you select a PNG and a EXR, does the EXR maybe makes an environment texture and the PNG makes an image texture node or does it asks you every time? What happens? Then uh, regarding of OBX, uh, oh, sorry, uh, FBX, OBJ, etc. That's another completely different monster. OBJ is now native in C, so it means that Blender will always have the OBJ importer exporter available. So that means that you could drag and drop and it should be e a bit easier to implement than the drag and drop in an FBX. The problem with FBX is that it's an add-on. It's not built in. Uh, it's a proprietary um, format also that sucks. So, and also being an add-on, it means that the, the user can disable that add-on. So when you drag and drop an FBX file, you first have to check if the add-on is enabled, if it exists at all, and then you can do the import. What happens if you import, if you drag an OBJ and an FBX files into Blender and a blend file, all three into Blender? How many windows does it open? Does it try to import them all? Does it have different settings for each one? The question, sorry that I'm answering you with questions, but uh, it's it's never as easy. You know, sometimes you just think of like, ah, oh, yeah, I need it for, or also you need it for this one workflow that you have, but never, um, you can never imagine the gazillion workflows other people have. So it's always tricky. It's always tricky. I know, I know the pain. Sometimes there are questions that are easy to answer, sometimes not so much. But you know, it's good to to keep this um, going, to ask again, maybe make a proposal and right click select, get other people involved. And also if you see these kind of proposals on right click select, try to think of all the different scenarios and let's, as a community, let's try to come up with a solution for those. Um, I noticed that in right click select, there is so many great proposals, but sometimes there are proposals that are maybe missing uh, this specific scenario and then they don't get updated and or, or the new proposal is made but i think we should try to maybe improve those proposals just edit them and make them better implications people the says scott yes in the chat next um 15 Wolsey says hey pablo thanks for all you do thank you for watching i wanted to ask a question about the add more noise types node in right click select. It says that it's been in development, but I can't find any development being done on it. Could you check it out? Well, 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 yeah, I think you're talking about the most voted um, proposal on right click select ever. So as 634, there's 10 people downvoted it even. That's cool. Maybe some are bots. <laughs> Um, but anyway, 69 comments. Nice. This is a long standing. If you, if you look at the date, it has been in 2019. So why is it in development if there is no development? Okay. Two answers. One is that maybe there is some development happening going on here that you can, maybe someone posted a patch, but the thing is that the, this proposal is so old that when 
this um, when when some of this were implemented well actually when this was posted none of this were available and over time some of them were added so that's why it's in development the thing is that not all of them were added so that would be a a good task for someone to to come up with however uh, if you know of a task that can be attached to this let me know share it and we can add it here because i'm an admin that's why i can edit things but uh in right click select we added a feature re recently that if you edit you can actually just add a development url so you can add a developer.blender.org slash d whatever or t whatever for a task or for a differential uh, a, basically a page and if you edit there it's going to show up here so you can easily um, see what is the status of things because sometimes it happens it is also based on community feedback it could happen that the um, the maybe the task was done already but it wasn't updated all right i think we are done there is okay this is actually the last one and and it, it, yeah, it's about the same where i was before so let's do the last one hi pablo hope you're having a great day waffle thank you waffle is there any talk discussion about blender support on very high vertices vertice, vertex count with nanite in unreal 5 now it makes sense that meshes will get denser and higher geometry counts higher vert, vert support would also make Blender Sculpting a much bigger competitor to ZBrush. Have you tried it lately? I know Blender is not up to the level of ZBrush for sculpting or like ZBrush 2D, 2.5D way of sculpting or Nanite's insane technology, but one of the biggest, giants, epicest uh, <laughs> in the industry, literally. However, is the... Wait, what is... There was a video about Blender sculpt performance 3.2 i saw the other day where is this one look at this amazing video about outgang this uh is it's so so nice it starts with a 2 million polygon um head and then it starts just adding and subdividing and just just us okay let's go let's go with more let's go i think it was with like 20 million uh, 20 million vertices when are you going to need more than 20 million vertices in one object maybe you can maybe you could but the fact that you can well it's also very large strokes actually uh, at some point um, if you zoom in you can see that the 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 editing is much faster and it also compares with the with the um, multi-res modifier and multi-res modifier is a bit of a disappointment here um you can you can see why uh, you should watch this video it's amazing it's very well done and it goes into detail and also compares to uh, other software so pretty happy to see such a thorough um look into the performance and a bit of a dismissif dismissify the fact that blender can't handle high polygon counts especially in the latest builds in the latest uh, 3.2 or 3.3 actually and this is even 3.2.0 um 3.2.2 which is and the build bot should be a bit more stable so recommended to update but also recommended to watch this i'm actually going to copy paste and share it here in the chat because everybody should watch this and i'm excited to see more uh videos from outgang so thank you for making this video if you're watching and uh, thank you for making that question. And that was the last question of today. So we can go back to full screen. And what about calling it a day and a week and a two weeks, actually? Because next week, as I mentioned, the team, the Blender team, are going to the biggest computer graphics conference in the world, SIGGRAPH. Blender has been at SIGGRAPH since 1999, I believe. 98, 99. Since forever. Since then, uh, every year when it, when it happened, uh, it's been there. And this year, we actually have a 
big booth around well if you're over there you probably know in feet is around 20 feet uh, around six meter um, by six meter it's an island one of the sides is gonna be, I don't want to spoil much but it's one on one side is gonna be a big screen and we're gonna be just hanging out there and um, hopefully I don't know if we we I think yeah I had a we we made a little um, a little just a make let's see if I can maybe show you there yeah so we try to to make a, a mock-up of this so excited to see you over there and hang out in real life for the longest time that we haven't also it's gonna be my first time in Vancouver so if you have any recommendations what to do in Vancouver please let me know in the comments below other than that I'm going to uh, call it a day I'm gonna go home to stream Blender today in Spanish Blender Oi and also wait for another two weeks so next week is the 8th of August so let's meet again on the 15th of August we're already in August where did the year go you know time flies when you have fun and when you have Blender so let's meet again in two weeks Again, if you want to uh, follow, maybe I'm going to be, I think I'm going to be posting about Seagraph on uh, Instagram, on Blender Instagram. So blender.official over there. See you around. I hope you have fun. Have a great week. And I will see you again next week. <laughs> no, in two weeks. Same place though, same time. For another episode of Blender Today Live. Watch out your earphone. Ear Will be some some streams in SeaGraph. I don't know if I would do streams because it's just it's internet at, at the exhibitions always sucks. But I will try my best. In the worst case, we follow on, on Instagram or on, on YouTube. I'm gonna be posting if any. Thanks again. Have a great week. Happy blending. See you soon. Bye.